Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're going to be changing the oil filter housing gasket on this E46. It's the same process for most E46s. So what you're going to do first is you're going to go ahead and put the car up on ramps or jack it up or whatever. So first we're going to go ahead and drain the oil. Use a 17 millimeter socket, loosen the drain plug, and go ahead and drain all that out. Uh, I would suggest having two little drain pans. Let one fill up halfway and then go ahead and slide the other one onto it. That way you don't spill a lot. All right, so pretty much the reason you'll be wanting to do the oil filter housing gasket is if you've got an oil leak that uh, you know that's not the valve cover gasket and it might it could be the oil pan gasket but you want to go into the oil filter housing gasket first because that's a lot easier it's a four dollar part and it's a lot cheaper and it's a lot quicker than doing the oil pan gasket a quick way to tell if your oil uh, filter housing gasket is leaking is you gotta look behind the alternator on the block itself and there's gonna be like a waffle weave kind of thing and just see if there's any puddles of oil there because that's the main spot that the oil filter housing gasket will start leaking into. So if there's like a puddle or like any type of oil there, that means that you need to replace that gasket. Alright, so after you've drained the oil, go ahead and unplug your battery. You can do this before you drain your oil as well. Alright, so after you've drained the oil, you're going to go and remove the air box. So first, remove these three clips from right here. So once you have the air box taken off, we're going to go to remove the fan. If you have a mechanical fan, there's a DIY on that uh, in a separate video. Otherwise, if you have the electric fan, all you got to do is just remove this Torx bolt right here and the push pin on this side and remove the connectors. Then you can just pull it right up. All right, so after you remove the fan, we're going to go to remove the belt. So you're going to need a 16 millimeter socket. Get it on the tensioner and go clockwise, release the tension, pull this belt off. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the alternator. First, you're gonna remove this pulley, which is a 16. Then we can go ahead and remove the tensioner, and then we can go ahead and get the bottom bolt for the alternator as well. Now to remove the tensioner, there's a 13 millimeter bolt on the top, 13 millimeter bolt on the bottom. All right, so once you've removed that, you can go ahead and remove this bottom 16 millimeter bolt for the alternator. Now, from behind the alternator, we're gonna go ahead and remove the connector. We just push this tab in, pull the connector off. Then the actual terminal, which is a 17 millimeter. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove this power steering reservoir. Uh, it's gonna be held in with two 13 millimeter bolts, one right here and one right there. All right, so once you have the reservoir out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect these connectors. Push the tab in, pull it off, and there's one more in the back. Push the tab in, and pull it off. Now what you're gonna have is you're gonna have the oil line that goes up to the Vanos unit. We're gonna have to undo that, and then we're also gonna have to take off this power steering pump and just let that hang down there, and then we should be able to pull off this oil filter housing. All right, so it's gonna be a 19 millimeter bolt. It's like a banjo bolt, and you're gonna have two washers on there as well. So make sure you have the replacement washers. That way when you put the, uh, the line back on, you can put the new ones on. There's one washer and there's a second one. So there's the washer, the line goes in between, and then this washer, and then this goes to the housing. All right, so now to remove this uh, power steering pump, you're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket. There's one in the front. All 
And there's one more underneath the oil filter housing, right here, right where my finger's at. And there's the bolt. Now that you have all of that out of the way, now we're gonna go and remove all these bolts. Make sure you remember what order they come out. So there's one right here, one in that corner, one right here, one right here, one right there, and one right there. So a total of six bolts, and they're all 13s. This is the top left. Top right. Middle right. Middle left. Bottom left. bottom right. Now what you want to do is make sure there's no wires in the way and you're going to wiggle this off. And try not to get any dirt in the actual block. And there you have it. Alright so this would be a good time if you want to clean all this up. You can use a brake cleaner or something like that. Just make sure you don't get any chemicals inside the actual block. And I'm just going to stuff this in here, that way no dirt gets in here. Alright, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go to remove this old gasket off of the oil filter housing. So what you're going to want to do is find the opening. As you can see, this one's pretty brittle. It's not 100% bad yet, but it was still leaking, so. But there's that. Now we're going to want to wipe all this stuff clean. And once again, make sure you don't get any dirt in here. Alright, so you can get this gasket at CarQuest or anywhere. It's like $4 and something. Uh, this is, there's the part number, B32350. It is a Victor Ryan's gasket. Uh, I've had pretty good success with all of them that I've used. Alright, so now what we're going to do is if you want, you can go ahead and put a little bit of oil on here. You just dip it in there, get a little bit of oil on here. And once you have the oil on there, we're going to go ahead and try to get it on here. Make sure you push it in all the way, especially around the grooves where it's supposed to hold it in. That way it doesn't tear while you're putting it on. And now once you have that done, just make sure there's nothing that's fell in there. And make sure the mating surface is clean on this and also the block. And then we're ready to go ahead and put it on. Alright, so once you have that sitting properly, then you're going to go ahead and start putting the bolts in. Do not tighten any of them all the way yet, just hand tighten them first. Alright, so once you have all the bolts finger tight, what you're going to want to do is you're going to start tying them in a star pattern. So start on the top left, then go to the middle right, go to the bottom left, then go to top right, then go to middle left, and then bottom right. And just keep doing that. Just do a few little turns at a time until you have it all the way down nice and tight. And once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and hook the connectors back up and the Vanos oil line as well. So what we'll do first, we'll do the Vanos oil line and make sure we do the washers. So one washer goes all the way down, then goes the line, and then the last washer. All right, so now you're gonna hook the connectors back up. So you have one long one that goes all the way right here. And you have another one that goes right on here in the back. And you have one left that's going to go on the alternator. Okay. Make sure all the connections are tight. Now we're going to go ahead and put the power steering pump back on with the three bolts. So the small bolt goes all the way underneath the housing. This long bolt goes right here. And this bolt goes right here. And once again, these are all 13s. So once you have the power steering pump resecured, we're going to go ahead and put the reservoir back. These are two 13 millimeter bolts. All right, so once you have that reservoir back, we're going to go put the alternator on. So once you have the alternator in place, you're going to put the bottom long bolt in first. All 
All right, so once we have that bottom bolt in, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the terminal and then the connector back. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the tensioner on. And this would be a good time to replace your belts, your pulleys, your tensioner, and pretty much all the stuff that we took off. So if your power steering pump was starting to whine or stuff like that, you can put that on right now as well. It'll be a lot easier. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and reroute the belt. So you're first gonna wanna release the tension like that. All right, so once you have that done, just make sure that the belt is on all of the ridges, on all the pulleys. Make sure all the pulleys feel tight. All right, now once you have that done, we're gonna go ahead and put the fan back on. So if you have a mechanical fan, it's the same opposite process of taking it off. Electric fan is the easiest, you just drop it in. Once you have the fan on, you're gonna go ahead and hook the connectors back up. Now once you have that done, we're gonna go ahead and remove the filter, the old oil filter, and make sure the drain plugs tighten back up on the, on the oil pan. That way you can refill the oil after we change the filter. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and change this o-ring off of the oil filter. So there's that. You can put a little bit of oil on the o-ring if you need to. So that way, it, uh, when you're tightening it back, it'll be easier. Put the new filter back on. Just like that. We can go ahead and put the air box back in. That way, everything else is back to normal and then we'll refill the oil. All right, so now that we have that done, we're gonna go in and refill the oil. I'm using Castrol 0W40, the European formula, and uh, we're gonna put about six and a half quarts in, drive it off the ramp to get it on level ground, check the dipstick, and then and then add some if we need some more. All right, so that's pretty much it for the oil filter housing gasket DIY. Go ahead and hook your battery back up if you took it off and pretty much just make sure you refill the oil properly and I'll still keep an eye on it and just make sure that's not leaking out of there just in case if you had it like the gasket warp or something like that. Just still keep an eye on it and that's pretty much it guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below.